The eternal dean in this club is an outrage. I ask you, what? You're perfectly right, Colonel. We ought to complain. Do you know that's the third spoon I've heard drop this month? Spoon's my hat. Wish somebody would throw a bomb and wake the place up. People don't do such things. Ah, they do when they're as bored as I am. Bored, Drummond? So bored, my dear Algy, that I believe I'm going mad. Dear old boy! I mean it. Of course you do, of course you do. Just you come into the bar. There. Isn't that better? No, Algy, not a bit. I've been bored too long. I can't stand it anymore. I'm too rich to work. Too intelligent to play, much. I tell you, if something doesn't happen within the next few days, I'll explode. I don't know what to suggest, dear old boy, unless you advertise, and you, you can't very well do that, can you? I don't know, I might. I rather think that's an inspiration, Algy. By Jove, I do. I didn't know you had it in you. Say, Barman, give me a piece of paper and a pencil. Now, let's see. To the editor. Personal column, The Times, London, Demobilized Officer, Finding Peace Unbearably Tedious. Dear old boy, you're not serious. All wrong. That advertisement was the best idea you ever had. Not one of these letters but holds its own, its own promise of excitement, adventure, and who knows, romance. Here's one from a woman whose husband spends all his time raising pedigreed goldfish. She wants you to kill either the husband or the goldfish. I hope you'll draw the line at murder, sir. Oh, I will, Danny, I promise you. Thank you, sir. That's reassuring, sir. Now uh, you read yours. Right, Joe. Hello, I've got a good one. This is from a girl who signs herself, Phyllis Benton. Mm, nice name, Phyllis. Sounds like a chorus girl. She wants to know if my intentions are serious. If they are, will I meet her at the Green Bay Inn, four miles from Godalming, on the London Road at midnight tonight? Is she proposing marriage? Well, she's reserved a couple of rooms for me in the name of John Smith. I don't like the sound of that, sir. She says if I'm a gentleman, I won't fail her because... Because, by Jove, she's in hideous danger. Hooray, hooray! Now I'll choose one. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I haven't finished with Phyllis yet. She interests me, Algy. I can, I can see her coming into the Green Bay in dark, voluptuous, and dramatic. Drummond, you be aware of Phyllis. Wouldn't you beware, Danny? Indeed I would, sir. I'd beware within an inch of my life, sir. Why? Hideous danger sounds very promising. I believe I'm for Phyllis, Algy. In the Green Bay Inn. By Jove, I am for Phyllis. Dear old boy! Midnight tonight, eh? All right, I'll be there. Danny, pack my bag. Pajamas, toothbrush, and a gun. Please, sir. Don't you really think, sir? Yes, sir. On second thought, never mind the pajamas. Just a toothbrush and a gun. Uh, Danny? Yes, sir. The boots, Danny, the boots. Yes, sir. No, no, not those, the adventure boots. The seven league boots with the nails in them.
Danny, how are we going to stop him? That's beyond me, sir. He's ordered the Mercedes Roadster. Great Scott, we must do something. Drummond, for the last time, I beg of you. No good out here. My mind's made up. Very well, then. Danny, my coat. I'm coming with you to look after you. <laughs> Wrong again, Algy. I'm the one that's bored with life, not you. I'm the one that's looking for a thrill, not you. This is my adventure, my boy, not yours. Hideous danger. Voluptuous. Dark. Dramatic danger. And Phyllis. Mad, sir, that's what he is. Stark, staring mad, sir. Danny, uh, Captain Drummond has uh, other cars, uh, hasn't he? Indeed, yes, sir. Uh, several, sir. I shall need one of them. Now you're going mad, sir. Which uh, would you recommend? The Rolls Royce, sir. The Rolls Royce? A very nice little car. Have it brought round and get your hat and coat. My hat and coat, sir? What, am I to go mad too, sir? Not at all. I'm going to look after Drummond and you're coming to look after me.
Oh, my hat. Thank heaven, Daddy, we're in time. Algy, you are a meddlesome jacker. Dear old boy, Danny and I have decided that if you will carry on with a voluptuous, blackmailing, breach of promise female, you'd much better do it in London where you can be near your lawyer. Algy, if I'd wanted a bodyguard, I should have sent for my maiden aunt. Oh, I say. Why not? He's more of a man than you are. It's midnight now, and if you think that I am... Here you get and keep quiet. Come on. I'll find a way to get rid of you later. It's a lucky thing there's no Mrs. Drummond, sir. The point is an abstract one, but they're well taken, Danny. Very well taken. I'm coming. There's a hole. A peep hole, sir. It's peep. See her, sir? Yes. Is she dark? Enough. Dramatic? Rather. Voluptuous? Mm. Oh, you must think this very strange of me. I don't. I think it's very charming of you. Oh, before I explain, you must tell me, on your word of honor, whether that advertisement I saw in the Times was serious. Oh, just a joke. Oh, your word of honor, please. Well, it started as a joke, I must admit. But now... Now you can take it as serious. Word of honor. Oh. Oh, I'm so relieved. I'm glad you feel that way about it. Oh, I'll try to explain. No, no, don't. Why not? I'm afraid of... Waking up. Oh, well, Mr. Smith, and I... And that's another thing. I find somehow that I can't masquerade with you. My name is Drummond. Captain Drummond. Hugh Drummond. Great Scott! He's telling his real name. Please believe that I'm serious, Captain Drummond. And understand that there was no other way for me to see you without your being seen. Even at this hour of night, I can't be entirely sure of giving them the slip. Giving them the slip? Uh, you, you try and explain things quite clearly. No, oh, I am trying. I've taken a little house on the edge of Godalming, four miles from here. Mm -hmm. I took it because it's next door to the hospital where my uncle is a patient. Only he isn't a patient, and it isn't a hospital. Well, you mean that... Just what I say. It belongs to a Dr. Lakington and to a man named Peterson and to Peterson's sister. Only she isn't his sister. He isn't a patient and it isn't a hospital and she isn't his sister. Danny, I believe you're right. You see, this Dr. Lakington and Peterson claim to be treating my uncle for a nervous breakdown. But I know they've got him in their power somehow and are bleeding him. This Dr. Uh... What's his name? Is he a real doctor? Oh, yes. 
Oh, all of that, Captain Drummond. Oh, if you'd seen him, he's... Oh, you don't believe me. Yes, I do, I do. Only, you may be wrong about his motives, you know. And unless you've got some very real evidence to the contrary, this hospital may be all that it claims to be. Oh, now, I don't look offended. I, I'm only wondering why, if these people are as bad as you think they are, why they should take so much trouble over your uncle. Well, even in America, where we come from, Captain Drummond, my uncle is considered a wealthy man. Oh. His name is John Travers. Travers? Tra no, not the John Travers. Yes, Captain Drummond. The John Travers. My turn, sir. No good being a hog, sir. Danny! No class distinction, sir. Your own idea, sir. Quite right, Danny, quite right. Uh, would you uh, care to use my eyeglass? What does your uncle say about all this? Oh, I'm not allowed to see him. I've only seen him once. And that was by accident. Had a window. Just for a moment. And then a pair of hands reached out and dragged him back. Such a look as he had. Oh, I know they're keeping him under some drug. And twice, twice I heard him scream as though they were torturing him. My dear Miss Benton, seems to me to be a case for the police. Why haven't you been to them? Because I'm not at all sure this hold they have on him isn't in some way disgraceful to him. Oh, he's not above disgracing himself. I see. No, you don't. You don't believe a single word I've said. Oh, I do, I do. Only, well, you, you must admit it. Rather like a penny thriller, isn't it? Well, I dare say it is. Thank you, Captain Drummond. I'm sorry to have wasted so much of your time. Uh, now, please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. I mean that I want to help you no matter what... Oh, thing. I don't know what will become of me if you don't help me. I have no one to turn to. I'm alone here. Hadn't we better break in before she gets violent? The door's locked, sir. You poor girl. Now, you tell me what it is you want me to do, and I'll do it. Word of honor. Your word of honor? <laughs> I'm so afraid of not seeing you again if I don't. Well, then, would it be too much if I asked you to? <gasps> Don't be frightened, Miss Benton. Dear old boy, don't be alarmed. We're still with you. Miss Benton, uh, now where is she? No, you don't. Grab him, Danny. Dear old boy, control yourself. You ought to be shot for this. Don't you realize what she is? A lunatic, sir. Hasn't been out of a straitjacket for weeks. Her hospital isn't a hospital. That's quite true. It's a lunatic asylum. And this Dr. Lakington's her keeper. It can't be her story. Never heard worse raving in my life. Oh, sir, such things don't happen in the British Isles. Not now. You're perfectly right, Danny. Of course they... What the devil's the matter with you? Captain Drummond? Captain Drummond? The lady who was just here left her bag, I think. Oh, no, she didn't. Dr. Lakington. My mistake. I'm sorry. Not at all. You won't forget me the next time you see me, will you? No.
The lunatic issue. What do you think of that? Algy, my boy, you get back to London as fast as the rolls can carry you. I'm off to Godalming, four miles from here. You're not. Just try and stop me. Now you shut up. And now, my dear, we can talk more comfortably. So, you're coming out in your true colors at last. How dare you spy on me? Spy on you? You're coming to stay with us at our house, where we can really watch you. And protect you from any further indiscreet behavior. What would your uncle think? if he knew how you compromised yourself tonight. Your poor, sick uncle. And we trust that for Captain Drummond's sake, as well as for your own, you have made no foolish statements which might cause him to meddle in affairs in which he cannot and had better not concern himself. The point, Miss Phyllis, is this. Are you expecting to see Captain Drummond again? No, Mr. Peterson, I am not. Oh, we're very pleased to hear that, my dear. You're not to communicate with him again. You're not to try anything.
evening. Miss Benton is still awake? Miss Benton is entertaining friends this evening. Friends? Well, I'm an old friend of her uncle's. I'm sure that she'll see me. Won't you come in? Thanks, I should love to. Oh, forgive my calling at this late hour, Miss Benton, but I wanted news of your uncle's health. I was passing by, I saw the light, and I heard the music. Oh, uh, Phyllis, dear. Aren't you going to introduce us? Miss Peterson, Captain Drummond. Just old-fashioned music lovers, my brother and I, Captain Drummond. Trying to cheer dear little Phyllis up. Your brother? Such a big brother. <laughs> <laughs> well, not that he's any too big for you. Uh, <laughs> and now, how is Mr. Travers? Oh, uh, nerves are slow things, you know, Captain Drummond. Yes? I've never had any trouble with mine. Really? I congratulate you. Mine are steady, too. Good. Are you, are you the doctor in charge of this case? I? <laughs> oh, dear, no. Dr. Lakington is in charge. I'm so sorry he isn't here to meet you. Yes, so am I. Well, Miss Benton, I shall be in the neighborhood for a few days. And if you're in need of cheer, there's racing over at Gatwick tomorrow. Wouldn't you like to come? Fond of gambling, Captain Drummond? Now and then, a small game. Stay with the small game, Captain. It's the big one that spell disaster. Exactly what my grandmother always taught me. Never bet, except on a sure thing she said, and then put your shirt on it. <laughs> oh, I can see her now. With the golden rays of the setting sun lighting up her sweet old face. Somebody step on the cat's tail. No, no, that's my uncle. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, my God. Yes. Oh, help, help. Oh, 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 no. That Travers you were beating up? Beating up, Captain Drummond. Don't you know hospital discipline when you see it? <laughs> hospital discipline, eh? Why, of course, how stupid of me. Well, when he recovers, tell him I called, will you? Oh, you're not leaving us? Don't you think I'd better? Perhaps you had. Say goodbye to Miss Phyllis for me, too, will you? And au revoir to you. What are the orders I've given in this house? What sort of a nursing home will people think this is if they can hear the patients screaming for help? You dumb witty scum! Get out! What are you crying for? Murder, torture. Oh, pull yourself together or we shan't let you see your uncle. Oh, you have no intention of letting me see him. You only want to shut me up where I can't interfere with your plans. You know you may be right. Just the same, you'd better come quietly. You can't help yourself. Drummond. Miss Benton, it just occurred to me this would be a fine time for you to visit my maiden aunt in London. Now, could you get ready in a hurry? No, Captain Drummond. No? Phyllis is not leaving here tonight. At the moment, I'm not sure whether you're leaving yourself. Are you planning to prevent me, Miss Peterson? I shall prevent you, Captain Drummond. I don't wish to seem curious, but would you tell me how? I'd rather show you. <whistles> 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 I 
quite forgotten the old-fashioned music lovers. Just the same, Miss Benton, I'm going to get you out of this. Uh -oh. Come out and put up your hands. Dear old boy, oh, was that you whistling? Was that you answering? Yes. Uh, I heard somebody whistle, and I, I'm fond of whistling. And I thought it might be Drummond, because uh, he's fond of whistling too. So I, I whistled back, uh, like this. <coughs> Bless my Out soul. Out of here. Right you are. Wait, 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 wait till I get this blonde's telephone number. Yeah. After them! After them! Get Bulldog Drummond! In the car, quick! Get Miss Benton to the Green Bay Inn and stay there till I come. Oh, but Captain Drummond! Why don't you fret, Miss Benton? I'll bring your uncle with me. I say, you try to get me that Dalton's telephone number. Got clean away, and you made no effort to stop. What could I do? Those yellow dogs of yours. You can't blame me, you know. Now, now, we're not blaming you, girlie. Only this game is up. Up? Oh, we've got rid of Drummond, haven't we? Yes, but we'll have the police here at any moment now. The only thing for us to do is to clear out. Quick. And leave Travers? He's right. The wise crook knows when to quit. Oh. You two can quit if you like. I'm going to see this thing through. Sweetheart, it's too risky. Not for me, it isn't. Oh, that Drummond's got my blood up. Let Travers go. Mm, not I. Why, he's got everything we want. Just think. One little signature and the works are ours. Where's the risk? Let the police come. Isn't Lakington a real doctor? And who's going to prove this isn't a real hospital? Anyone can prove that Travers isn't a real patient. Well, give him something real the matter with him. Break his legs, fracture his skull if you must. But don't let him go. What do you say, Lakington? If you work fast, we might try once again for his signature. Can you bring him round enough to sign? It may be fatal. What if it is? Markovitch. Yes, sir. Mr. Travers, to the central chamber. Girlie, I'd go through with anything for you. Take him in there, Markovitch. The sight of the injection makes the lady faint. I don't like drugs.
That will be all, Markovich. Hmm. Yes. It won't be long now. You'll have to work quickly, though. I doubt if it holds for more than ten minutes consciousness. That ought to be enough. You'd better go. Let him find us alone. Why? That Lakington's a swine. I shan't be sorry when we're through with him. You little devil, you'll be leading him on. Oh, you won't! You'll be a dog! If I thought that you... Oh, no! I wouldn't double-cross you... with... anybody. <laughs> He's coming round. Already. Already? Give me another cigarette. Two again. Feeling better, Mr. Travers? Oh, you blackguards. You infernal blackguards. Oh, if you're going to use horrid language. Let's come to the point, Mr. Travers. Circumstances, pressing circumstances, have made it necessary for us to talk business again. Oh, my. More money? Oh, come, Mr. Travers. We haven't made expenses out of you yet. Now, here's a letter, prepared by me, instructing your London bankers to turn over to me certain securities and jewels which they're holding in their vaults for you. Now, if you'll be good enough to sign on the dotted line. I, I remember now. You, you doped my liquor. You got me into the room with that girl there. You framed me, you dirty blackguards. <laughs> Mr. Travers, would you like another of Dr. Lakington's stimulating treatment? Oh, you inhuman devils. You can't do any more than you've done already. Oh, can't we? You know, Mr. Travers, Dr. Lakington is an expert with drugs. He's just been discussing the possibility of an injection which would cause you to be an idiot for the balance of your life. Are the bonds worth that price, do you think? I don't believe you. <laughs> I won't sign anything. In that case, Mr. Travel, perhaps you'd better come with me. Oh, no! No! Wait! I, I'll sign! I'll do anything! Where is it? Where? That was close. He's gone under again. Well, I want you both to admit that I was right. You're always right, girlie. You were right, Emma. What the...
She's like the violet blue, ever a modest, ever true. From her leafy bower, perfuming the still night How I detest bird life. Hello, haven't you been asleep? Oh, how could I sleep? Well, if you can't, it isn't very polite for me to indulge. I say, what's wrong? We're both safe, and Robert will pull your uncle through all right. He never fails. No, it's not my uncle I'm thinking of. It's Captain Drummond, in such danger, and through me. I say, you're not getting a drumonditis too, are you? What drumonditis? A complaint most women get soon after they meet Bulldog Drummond. No, I don't know what you mean. Don't you? I'll explain more fully. No, you needn't. Listen, isn't that a car? It's not only a car, it's the car! Yo-ho, Drummond! Here we are, here we are! Steady! Here's Captain Drummond and he's got servers with him. Go down and lend a hand. Very good, sir. Here we are again. Oh, Uncle, are you all right? He's just a little wet, that's all. I'm afraid we've no time for these reunions now. Let Danny take charge of him this sentence. Danny, take him into the bedroom and drive him out. And now, we'll be off to London just as soon as I've had something to eat. Algy, be a good fellow and rustle me up some bread and cheese, will you? Oh! And a pint of beer. Beer? Coffee for the women and children and the poor weak fools who can't curb their passion for... Strong drink. But, but for the sober honest man who has worked hard and needs health and strength for the labors to come... Beer! How did you get on? Oh, tell me, tell me, please. What is there to tell? It was too easy, if anything. I got him out, gave him the slip. I says to myself, says I, says I, 
There's the one, the only one for me. A poet might speak of the blush in your cheek as the bloom of a rose newly born. Your voice, the refrain of a song of the rain in the light of a bright April morn. I saw an angel from out the sky and I says to myself, says I, says I, there's the one, the only one for me. Play it again for me. I'll be back in a minute. And so, as I said before, here we are again. Oh, I think you're perfectly wonderful. Thank you. That's very nice of you, but you mustn't say such things. I must be getting drumonditis. Drumonditis? Oh, that, that's one of Algie's jokes, isn't it? Is it only... A joke? Well, if there were any such complaints, I don't mind saying that I wish you would catch it. Oh, I think I might oblige. Will you? Please. Just like that? Why not? You have your own way of putting things, Captain Drummond. Oh, I don't want to be flippant. Let's forget all this kidding. I came out to look for adventure. I wasn't expecting to find you, Phyllis. But I have found you. And now, oh, please, please, please take me seriously. Oh, he tried, and I said to myself, I the We've just closed up. We can't serve anything more tonight, sir. You can serve us. Lack of milk. Please believe I am serious. When I when I check you. Oh. Oh. Dear old boy, I hope I'm not interrupting. No, Algie, not a bit. You're just developing a real genius for popping in. Sorry, but I thought you ought to be told that your friend Nakington is downstairs drinking milk. What? Milk! And not buttermilk, just ordinary cow's milk. <laughs> I'm afraid I've been a little optimistic. Danny! Danny! Yes, sir! You'd better get Mr. Travers out of the bedroom and take him... Take him up to this cubby hole up here. Very good, sir. Now, to give him a hand, will you, while I investigate? That's the idea, Danny. You take the feet, sir. Does he mind his head? anyone else in the house? Yes, sir. My father. Asleep? Yes, sir. And that's all? 
Oh, Mr. Longworth, what do you think? I can't think. Algie, Algie, you call up the police. Tell them, tell them to send up a dozen men, big men, with whiskers. Are you there? Are you there? Hello? Hello? I see trouble and there's no answer. Well, don't be silly. Let me try. Hello? Uh, Algy? Uh-uh. You, you listen at the door. covered. Will you go up? Watch me. Be quiet about it. Remember, this is an inn. Oh, I'll be quiet. But first, whiskey, I think. Double whiskey. Dear old boy. Hey, that's splendid of him. This is going to be a real lark. Only, Miss Benton, I think that you'd better go upstairs and join your uncle. Oh, I'd rather not. I beg your pardon? I'd rather not. This is much my show as it is yours. That's splendid of you. But just the same... <laughs> would you mind stepping out of the line of pop guns? The Lady Irma, if I'm not mistaken. Now then, turn off the lights, Algy. Uh, come in, Miss Peterson. Oh, oh a dressy wench. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, all right. Uh, turn them on again, uh, Algy. I just wanted to make sure that I saw you first. Sorry as I am to intrude on your little love nest, Captain Drummond. A patient has disappeared from Dr. Lakington's hospital at Godalming. I've come to fetch him back. Are you ready to surrender him? Is he supposed to be here? Mm, you stole him away, Captain Drummond, in your high-powered car. Are you sure of that? Quite. Are you going to apologize? You know, Captain Drummond, a man of your intelligence should find a more respectable amusement than kidnapping patients out of hospitals. The police don't take kindly to such conduct. You didn't bring the police with you? No. I thought you might see the force of my argument without them. Yes, I saw the force of your argument through the window. Are you going to apologize and surrender our patients then? Well, I suppose I'll have to. Good. I'm sorry, Miss Benton, but what else can I do? Nothing. I understand. You sure? And while I'm gone, I think you'll be more comfortable in the bedroom. Drive him back for you. Oh, no, you're not. I'll take him back myself. I have other plans for you. Oh, have you? Well, in that case, I'll just get him ready for the ride. No trickery, Bulldog Drummond. Just a fur coat to keep him warm. Oh. Algy, give the lady a drink. Where are your manners? What are you thinking of? Guess. Guess what I'm thinking of.
Is it uh, animal, vegetable, or mineral? Oh, look here. I I'm not playing a game, you know. Not even the old, old game of love. Well, since, uh, since you speak so frankly... Oh, don't lose your self-control, will you? Oh, dear, no. No, 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 I, I should never do that. I, I don't know, though. I, I might, a, a little bit, for you. Oh, you mustn't. You'd be so dangerous. You'd frighten me. Well, you, you wouldn't like that. Well, I wouldn't want you to get hurt. Oh, thank you. Anything else? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, now that you've showed me that you understand my romantic uh, nature, I, I think we've got far enough uh, for the moment. <laughs> uh, let me see, though. The, there was something else. Oh, don't tell me you've gone and lost your silver pencil. No, 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 that's all right. No. Oh, I'm so glad. Ah, I know. Your telephone number. Shh, not so loud. Oh, uh, what do you want with my telephone number? Well, I, I thought I'd just jot it down and uh, give you a buzz one evening. Oh, would you? W would you like that? Algie. Dear old girl. Oh. <laughs> Captain Dunham says, would you bring up the whiskey, sir? The whiskey? Oh, all right. You, Charles? Work the bedroom window. She's in there. Now the muffler goes this way. And the hat. Like that. How's the disguise now? Quite perfect, sir. Good. And I'll trouble you for the fur coat and the pair of gloves. Phyllis? Phyllis, my dear. Who is it? Open the door. I want to talk to you, dear. Open the door. I'll do no such thing. I'll open this door only to Captain Drummond. You will open this door if you know what's good for you. I won't. I won't. You're criminals and murderers. I'll call the help off. down to the car. Chum, you two get Drummond. Drummond's the man I want. They'll never know you, sir. But isn't it whiskey for me? <laughs> Not a bit of Drummond thereafter. <laughs> Dear old boy. You two stay here until things quiet down. Then take Travers and Miss Benton up to London. Take them to some hotel and get them settled. Then bring the whole of Scotland Yard down for me at Dr. Lakington. I'll have the gang ready to turn over. What if they should turn the tables on you, sir? Well, I've got a gun. I'll just have to shoot my way out. But, 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 but what if they chased me now? Oh, now, Algie, do try not to get shot, won't you? Are you ready? Just a minute. Come on, quick. That's right. Mind the corner. Steady, Mr. Travers. Steady now. Here he is, Miss Peterson. Sorry I can't wait. Get from him, you fool!
Dmitry Markovitch. That's Drummond. Jolly night for the ducks. What? hands on Drummond just for a minute, I'd let Lakington poison him. Great job, girlie. Just the same. I wish you hadn't lost Drummond. No more than I do. With that young man on the loose? Don't try to quit again. I was about to remark, my dear, that with Drummond on the loose, we might do well to move to some other part of the country. Taking Travers with us, of course. Not a bad idea. Not if Travers comes with us. When would you be starting? At once. Before he can make things too hot for us again. Good. Give me time to get a few drugs together. We shall need those... Why, where is Travers? Hey, what do you think you're doing? Uh, Drummond! Hands up! Nothing. Well, I'll be... Can't you stay away from here? I find it very difficult. You're getting to be a nuisance, drum. Where's Travers? Who's Travers? Careful, Drummond. You're not the only one who can shoot straight. Is that the torture chamber? Put those hands up! Absolutely no deception. I apologize for my slight loss of temper. It's quite all right. Hadn't we better... Yes, perhaps we had. If you have your straps, Lakington... Always. More of the Wild West show? Don't shoot till I tell you, my dear. Yes, n not until he tells you, my dear. Much as I regret to submit you to this slight indignity. Don't mention it, please. Thank you. There. Uh, would you mind deflecting that blast in the other direction? What blast? Even your best friends won't tell you. Where's Travers? I wonder. Still at the inn? 
Possibly. Possibly not. Now, look here, my adventurous young friend. Why not leave this to me, Peterson? I think I know how to handle Bulldog Drummond. Markovich. Bring the girl here. What girl? Now, Phyllis, you haven't got Phyllis here. Oh, haven't we? Where did you get her? How did you get her? You're not the only one who can think fast, Captain Drummond. Oh, my. I'd only know that. Phyllis! What do you want with her, you filthy hound? I want her to teach you to answer questions. Just an old Spanish custom. In there, Markham. Nickington, if you hurt one hair of that girl's head, I'll kill you. I'll take my chances of anything you can do now. What are you going to do to her? Phyllis, Phyllis. She doesn't know where Travers is. She doesn't know. Stop that! I'll tell you anything you want to know. Lakington. Hold up. The trick's turned. Too bad. I hadn't even started. We're waiting. Well, I... I left Travers at the inn. In an attic room up the stairs from my room. Is that the truth? Yes, that's the truth. If it isn't, you're not going to live to lie to me again. We leave you, Captain Drummond, in Dr. Lakington's loving hands. I wonder if you know, Captain Drummond, how loving my hands can be. Phyllis, my dear, she'll come round presently. And now we are, we are going to amuse ourselves. An excellent room in which to amuse oneself, Captain Drummond. No fear of interruption. Are you uh, interested in electricity? No? Let me show you an invention of mine. An electric door so perfectly contrived that no one can come in or get out of this room while the current is switched on. Ingenious, isn't it? I've honored you in showing you that, Captain Drummond. 
Not even Peterson. Curse him. Knows about that door. Of course, I... I shouldn't have shown it to you. Had there been any likelihood of your ever leaving this room alive? No more of that. No more of that now. We are... We are amusing ourselves. Charming. Charming? I really never noticed Miss Phyllis until this evening. Fortunately, there's time to rectify that oversight. Well, stop that, you, you dirty swine! Don't let me get my revenge so easily. And now, Captain Drummond, I'm going to put you to sleep. You get the idea? You can dream the rest. I shall be more free. Seems I, I'll have to keep that promise, Dr. Lakington. What? Promise? To kill you. Don't say that, my dear. I'm being as gentle as I can. It wasn't pretty, was it, my dear? I'm sorry, you had to see it. Something tells me that algae.
I'll bet it's algae. It's algae. I just had to kill Lakington. So the sooner you bring the police here from Scotland Yard, the better. I... Yes, yes. I think go off, what's the matter? Algy, I'll have to ring off now. Peterson has just come in, and he doesn't seem to want me to say any more. Yes, but you... If you move a muscle, I'll shoot. Then I certainly shall not move a muscle. Lakington? Lakington! You have to call louder than that. You've killed him. It's an old Spanish custom. I told you I'd kill him. And I told you I'd kill you. I don't think you committed yourself positively on that point. I said if you lied to me. I didn't lie to you. Travers was not at the Green Bay Inn. I never said he was. I said I left him there. I'll wait downstairs. I must. Come with me. This is no good. I know it isn't. Do as you're told. Please. Do as you're told. Now, you saved Travers. Don't you wish you could save his niece? What do you mean? I can't afford to have a witness to your death. I shall be forced to kill the pair of you. You think of everything, don't you? But listen, you can't do Put that. Put your hands up. Why, it would be cold-blooded murder. I'm not afraid of murder. A man and a woman are found shot to death in the hospital. The doctor's dead, too, with a revolver in his hand. Do you grasp that? Oh, yes, it, it couldn't be clearer, only. Well, supposing you were found here, too. I shan't be found here. Are you sure of that? To try and get out of this. He's killed both of them. It's all right now. We can wait in comfort for the police. I've got to hand it to you, Drummond. I've lost and you've won. Will you do me a favor? What's that? I don't want to see my girl lock up. I like you for that, Pete. Let her go, will you? Just let me call her on the phone. Help yourself. Hello? Hello? That you, Elmer? Listen, kid. I've lost. Drummond's won. But he's willing to let you get away. Work the old circus gag. Don't cry. Goodbye, kid. The circus gag. Well, boys, if you never work fast before in your life, do it now. What's the the circus gag? She knows, Sonny. Does she, Daddy? I hope the police come soon. Now, they won't belong. Sit down, Miss Benton, won't you? Make yourself comfortable, Pete. I suppose you wouldn't consider coming into partnership with us. <laughs> I'm not cut out for crime. You're wrong there. You'd be a wonder at it. We've got to pull this off, boys. So keep your heads. Say, Pete, tell me, why are you a crook? Why did you put that advertisement in the Times? Well, I like adventure. So do I. I call upon you with the name of the law. Come in! 
All right, Peterson. Captain Drummond, sir. Inspector McAndrew of Scotland Yard, sir. You've made good time, Inspector. Here's your man. Will you take him along? Carl! Don't cry, girlie. Ah, oh, so they got the woman after all. Well, Pete, I'm sorry, but I did my best. Let's go. Phyllis. I'm sorry, sir, but you'll have to wait until I get back from locking this bear up. I'll put one of my men on the door to see that you don't leave and that no one enters. So long, Pete. Bye-bye, Irma. We'll see who laughs last, Bulldog Drummond. Well, it won't be long, Phyllis. So here we are. I've saved the hangman a job and got all the excitement I was looking for. I'm only sorry to have dragged you into it. But while we're waiting, why can't we go back to what we were talking about last night at the inn when that jackass Algy interrupted us? Dear old uh, boy! How did you get in? I walked in. The man at the door didn't stop you? There's no man at the door. What? There's no one there at all. There, there was a note pinned to the front door. A note for you. Dear Drummond, thanks for the start. The police were my own gang. That was the circus gang. Best wishes to the real police when they get here. Peterson. Pete to you. Good night, and to think I fell for that. Algy, get down and find out which way they went and look alive about. Rather. Uh, Operator. I still got to get that blonde's telephone number. Hello, give me Scotland Yard. Police headquarters in London. The police, yes. Well, be quick about it. I'm in a hurry. You idiot. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. No offense. You. Let them go. London, yes. I want them to get off. Is this London? I think she loves him. Waiting for Scotland Yard, yes. Women do love men. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> an old Spanish custom. Hello? Yeah, give me, give me detective headquarters, yes. Waiting, waiting. I love you. Waiting? Hmm? What was that you said, Phyllis? Just that. I love you. My dear girl, why haven't you said that before? 